This is the year of the dragon, and Roger Dean is a master of dragons. He's definitely a dragon friend. Look at this beautiful painting here. It's just superb. The dragon swooping through the air, and you can really see the influence that he's had on contemporary dragons, right? You, you can't miss the influence that Roger had on movies like Avatar and Game of Thrones, which transformed the character of the dragon from being St. George and the dragon of children uh, from the 19th century and Kenneth Graham into the modern dragon, which is violent and vicious and terrifying. And Dean's dragons are much more about the Tao of dragons, the Chinese uh, aesthetic of, of earth and water and fire and air and wood the balance of the elements and the dragon being part of that wonderful system of yin and yang. So here's a print of Roger Dean's logo for Virgin Records uh, done in the 1970s. And here you can see him already figuring out this serpentine dragon, the violent dragon that cannot be controlled in the same way as a Kenneth Graham dragon. This is an exciting, fiery spirit, uh, part of the Tao. It's coming from underneath the mountain, right? It's emerging from the cave. This is a psychological dragon. So here you can see Roger Dean at work developing the image of the dragon. This is a pen and ink sketch, an original piece of work from 2008. He's never stopped being interested in the Tao, in the balance of good and evil, light and dark. And here you can see him figuring out the dragon of the Tao. This is Roger Dean's Relaire. I think it's an icon of 20th century art not particularly because it was a fantastic Yes album cover, but because it's such a beautiful piece of watercolor and such an innovation in the idea of architecture becoming natural. Here he's taken the Gothic arch architecture of Canterbury Cathedral and turned it into desert landscapes. So he's blending buildings with natural worlds. It's a fantastic piece of work. This is Roger Dean's Floating Islands, and I think it's an excellent example of how he takes the aesthetics of the Song Dynasty and brings them into the modern age. You wouldn't mistake this painting for a Chinese landscape painting, but all of the elements of Chinese landscape painting are right here in this work. Uh, I think it really shows you how Roger Dean's work is part of art history. It's not standing there ex nihilo, coming from nothingness. Uh, into the 1970s and 80s and 90s. This has historical background. It's a real piece of fine art. What an extraordinary painting this is. You really get a sense of the rough and the smooth and the lightness of the work here. Very delicate work going on here, all the way down in the sky, fading from this purple lilac up at the top into the turquoise and then into the yellows on the horizon. The rocks over here and the architectural morphology here, very, very strange and mysterious and flirting between architecture and stone, and the, the layering of stone formations but definitely an alien civilization dwelling within these spaces. And I think that uh, Roger really finds that balance between classical painting and science fiction in this painting. And that's legitimate. It's a real thing. This is the literature of our time. Again, this is an art historical moment in this painting. So this is Arrival in Clouds. It's the moment when the fractured world is broken up and pieces of it have traveled around the universe and have landed on other worlds to infect them with the uh, ideas and culture of the previous world. It's abstract, it's unusual, and it's definitely eye-catching. Doesn't fit with our preconceived notions of what a painting should be about. And that makes it difficult to look at for some people. It makes it difficult to conceive. It makes people think it should be pushed aside and set aside from the narrative of real art.
But this is as real as any other art, and it affected millions of people. The narrative of the fragile world is a big narrative. Mm.